What's going on everybody? Welcome back to Comically Boston, episode 44. I can't believe we're 44 into this. Today is March 15th, 2023. We have some Celtics news. We we got a lot of news today. We're going to jump right into it, talk about the sports first, then we'll get into some news. Um, Celtics faced the Houston Rockets the other night, and I have no idea why we keep losing to teams that are just not that good. Um, JT had a chance to send it into overtime. He just missed a bunny layup and I think he just you know was took a two long strides and maybe hit the backboard with his finger and it just kind of threw the ball off and he was mad at himself but we dropped to 47-22 in a 111-109 loss. JB had a season high 43 in five rebounds. Brogdon had 20 off the bench. That's very upsetting Um, but maybe we'll get the Minnesota Timberwolves tonight. Uh, I believe we're at Timberwolves tonight at 8 p.m. So I'll be checking out that. I also have to watch the Ted Lasso season three premiere tonight. I haven't watched that yet, but there's some great television on right now, man. Um, Last of Us, The Last of Us season one just ended. There was some behind the scenes things leaked and uh, some pictures here. The giraffe was real. There was some parts of the giraffe looked CGI and looked terrible. Maybe it was just the background, but look, they get some real, um, uh, real giraffe in there. So that's kind of cool. They got to really interact with something, and I love to see the behind the scenes with the blue screens. And that's Craig Mays in there with the white flannel. Um, he was a great addition to this team from uh, Chernobyl. And just for Craig Mason, I'm going to go watch Chernobyl soon, so <laughs> stay tuned for that. And I'll be giving you my re- my review and my reaction to that. Um, but other than that, Last of Us Season 2, they said, will be multiple seasons. That's confirmed now, so that's awesome. Can't wait for that. Um, that needs to happen like yesterday. Uh, but there's reports in that Kang... Mr. Kang the Conqueror for jumping over to some Marvel news reports in that he, that he might be in season two. He might be the main villain for Moon Knight in season two. So, so maybe some Rama Tut action, jump into some more multiverse stuff with Kang. That would be awesome. I love Moon Knight season one. Comment below. What do you think of Moon Knight? Um, some new posters for some movies dropped. Fast X poster. You got Aquaman up there in the top right. I believe that's Daniela Malchier on the top left. Oh no, t- Dan- Daniela Malchier is in the bottom right, at least in the X. You got John Cena there. Oh, Brie Larson. Yeah, we got Shaw. We got Jason Statham. We got a, we got the crew, the whole, whole bunch of the crew back. Who's that bottom left there, right next to John? I don't know. Um, and it also looks like we have the the Brazil Christ the Redeemer statue up there. Is that Brazil again? Rio? Are we back in Rio? Um, it looks like they're going to be lining up and racing, getting back to their roots. Om- <laughs> if only they did it nine movies ago, getting back to their racing roots. Jesus. They did like three movies about racing and then made a bunch of movies about everything else. Now they're getting back to some racing. I don't know, I'm going to watch it. Fast 9 got me back into it with John Cena. I don't know if that was a good movie or not, but it it was what it was. Uh, (laughs) Another new poster for Mission Impossible, Dead Reckoning, coming out July 14th with Tom Cruise jumping off a cliff, you know, skydiving, motorcycle riding, doing his thing. He's a uh, crazy man. A new poster for John Wick, I believe that's at the Dolby Cinema. Um, with a nunchuck with blood all over his hand. That comes out March 14th. I just finished John Wick 3. I know I said I finished the trilogy of watching those three a while ago, but John Wick uh, 3, I had gotten halfway through and then it had gotten kicked off of HBO Max. But luckily it went over to a different streaming. I believe it's on Peacock now. So go check out those three movies if you haven't. Uh, the third one is is chaotic. It is a lot. It's just so much action. Um, ladies, you probably hate the John Wick movies, but it definitely seems like a, a man franchise. But I, I guess I'll go check out the fourth one. Um, I'm also excited for Aquaman. That's been long awaited. Um, <laughs> and this was kind of like taking over the sea. And it was Aquaman on one side and it was Little Mermaid on the other. Uh, the, uh, shout out to that young black girl. She looked gorgeous and people were hating on them for changing the little murder to a black girl and I was like I don't give a fuck she's gorgeous who cares and uh Melissa McCarthy shout out to her she looks great 
And uh, she's going to be playing Ursula, so I think that movie, for people that are into those type of movies, will be head over heels for it. Like, uh, Jess Clemens over at New Rockstar, she was made a video the other day. She's all excited about this movie, and her enthusiasm for the movie actually made me like, all right, wow, that actually looks like might be good, but I think it was more or less her liking it. I don't know if I, I'm even into it at all. Um... Uh, you know, I was never a fan of the first Little Mermaid. That was never my type of movie as a kid. For me as a kid, it was like Iron Giant, Monsters, Inc. Um, I really loved Monsters, Inc. That was like the one I found funny. But it was also a good story. Um, Iron Giant wasn't necessarily funny. There was funny parts, but that was so just... That was more or less I was interested in. Like, the giant was scary, and then it becomes your friend. And then all of a sudden, it's scary again. And then it saves the day. And then it's Superman. And that's actually Vin Diesel. I didn't even know that was Vin Diesel back in the day. So I've been I've been liking Vin Diesel for a long time, but I don't know. <laughs> don't meet your heroes. I don't, I don't think I'll ever meet Vin. Um, new poster for Daredevil: Born Again. How about that? Him standing in a church. So that will be coming to Disney Plus before we know it. And a new movie coming with. I, I said it the other day there was a, they presented together Andrew Garfield. And Florence Pugh, I was like, they gotta do something together. And maybe they presented because they ha they were shooting something together. A, a movie called We Live in Time. A film that is described as a funny, deeply moving, and immersive love story. So those two will be in a love story together. That probably is going to win a bunch of awards. <laughs> um, shout out to Everything Everywhere All at Once for winning the other night. Uh, they're legends indeed. I got a few more shout outs. Uh, Burt Kreischer's new special on Netflix, Razzle Dazzle. Uh, I watched that the other day. He's hilarious. He always kills me. He just looks fat as fuck. So it is what it is. Um, <laughs> uh, confirmed James Gunn, the writer, or the director for the Guardians of the Galaxy movies. He is now the head of the DC, for the people that don't know. Um, he's been writing the Superman Legacy movie that will be coming out 2025, I believe. Uh, but it is confirmed that he will be directing that movie as well, which I do like because he's a writer-director type of dude, and I think that's going to be awesome. Also, if you guys haven't checked out The Bad Batch this season, uh, for those of you that are Star Wars fans and like animated stuff, uh, The Bad Batch has been putting in a master class of what it, how good an animated show can look. Um, and yeah, it's just been a very good season. I think episode 13 came out today. Um, and I somehow was able to watch that in the mix of everything else. But let's get into where, why I'm really here and why most of you guys are here for the Mandalorians. Even though this is Boba Fett, but it's a Mandalorian helmet. And I do like how clean this shirt is. Um, the Mandalorian Chapter 19. I don't see a title in this last episode. I'm going to have to go look. But it's Chapter 19, uh, Season 3, Episode 3. And the last episode ended off with the Mythosaur, and we were like, what the hell? And it ended on a cliffhanger with Boba Fett, and, or uh, with Bo-Katan, and uh, Din Djarin sitting there, and he was passed out. So, it starts right out, right where we left off, and they're in the Mines of Mandalores at the, at the Living Waters. Mando wakes up, and he's like, I am redeemed. And she's like, well, you have bathed in the water, so I, I'm witness. You are definitely redeemed. Um, and she, like, starts asking questions, like, hey, uh... Did you see anything down there? He's like, like what? It's just something, you know, it was very far down to the bottom. She's like, yeah, but you never saw anything moving? And he's like, like what? And she's like, nothing. So she keeps to herself that she saw that mythosaur because of the old um, lore, I believe, behind it. There's something to do with the leader of Mandalore will show up riding uh, a mythosaur like Quill back in episode one. Your ancestors rode the great mythosaur. Um... So, <laughs> I, I want to see Mando ride it, because he is the one that's wielding the Darksaber right now. But we just saw Bo-Katan use it, and she looked like uh, she was fit to use it, unlike Mr. Mando here. Um, but I think it's just because Mando's been fighting it, and if he really believes he's the Mandalore Chosen One, or maybe the Chosen One's Bo-Katan, or maybe the Chosen One is... Grogu, or maybe it's Paz Vizsla, John Favreau, who knows? Um, <laughs> but we'll we can speculate about that further later. Um, moving on, so they leave, 
Mando and, and Bo hop on her ship, and they get they're getting chased down. <laughs> Random ship, six ships come out of nowhere. Uh, Grogu hides. Mando jumps out mid-flight as they're getting chased down. He shoots one down in her little gun pod in the ship. Um, he jumps out mid-flight, uses his jetpack, lands at his ship, chases him down. They take out the six TIE interceptors, which are harder to kill than TIE bombers. Bo maneuvers, maneuvers between the cliffs as they you know, chase him down, and they work together as a good team. And um, Six versus two, they end up taking it out and uh they they beat all the interceptors but they don't win the war they win the battle they don't win the war um tie bombers bomb bows home which is very sad uh very nice giant giants you know uh stone castle now it's bombed for no reason because tie bombers wanted to bunch of dickheads and she chases one down or chase start chases after him shoots a rocket at one of them kills one of them but there's a whole bunch of tie fighters coming so they have to jet off and they end up friggin jetting off to somewhere safe that mando can take them and they will find out more about them later but then we go on this whole journey with the doctor that was uh, that had to do with moff gideon and one of the um officers that was on Man moff gideon's ship and we go through this whole like little love story with them like falling to, for or him or the doctor, Doctor Penn Pershing, scientist, and her Elia Kane, communications officer. They go through this whole little love story where he like kind of falls for her and she like talks him into going to the this breaking out and going to steal supplies. And they go and they steal the supplies and they come out and then all of a sudden it's she set him up. And the whole thing, it's a beautiful story, it's interesting, but you're like, why am I watching this instead of with the Mandalorians? Like, to me, this was not my favorite episode, I, I'm not going to lie to you guys. Um, I really, you know, it was, as far as, you know, I'm a person that likes television and likes movies and shit, and it's gorgeously shot, like, you see Coruscant and you're just experiencing so much of the world of Star Wars. It is fascinating to see, but... Did, did I care? No, I don't really care about that doctor. Um, even it, what happens to him. Like, that little lady sets him up, and then f he goes to get his brain wiped in the Empire. No, son, he goes, it's a trap, it's a trap. You know, like, um, <laughs> and friggin', they set him up, and uh, they, they're like, oh, the Empire used to brainwash this people with this mind fr flare, mind fryer, or whatever it is. Um, and... The guy's like, no, no, I've been through this treatment, and just low frequencies, it can, we, it can be very, very soothing and help you forget about past motives, like being a scientist and cloning and shit, which he wasn't supposed to be doing, but really, he didn't want to do. The lady got that in his head and made him go with her and break out and go to this place and steal the supplies, and she set him up, and then... He is in the thing, he's getting the treatment, he's liking it, he's seeing colors, and then all of a sudden she cranks it up, and then she's eating the cookies, like, I'm like, evil bitch, Jesus. But then they cut back to Mando in, in Bo-Katan, and they go to where we started out season three, uh, with the giant crocodile turtle fight, um, <laughs> whatever you want to call that, but they go back and... Uh, John Favreau's Paz Vizla, Vizla walks out and he's like, you're an apostate. And Mando's like, I have bathed in the living waters. I'm, I bring proof. And she's like, I, I was a witness. And he's like, well, you're an apostate too. Bleh. You know, like, and they you get all snippy at each other. Then they go see the armor and he shows her the proof. He, he had gotten a flask of water at the living waters. He pours it in. Which is also the same water that she had poured in the same well at the start of the first episode in, in season three. Um, and then it, it is the living waters. It, it is proof. So they are both redeemed by the armor because he bathed, but so did bo -Katan. And so bo -Katan's like, I don't walk the way of... The, I don't walk the way like you guys. And she's like... Have you taken off your helmet since you have bathed in the waters with Din Djarin here? And she's like, no. Well, as long as you stay here and you don't take off that helmet and you, you are redeemed and you live by our way, you can leave whatever you want. But 
is if you stay, you are one of us. This is the way. And everyone congratulates them. And then Bo-Katan kind of is like, thank you, thank you, thank you, looking around. She's like, oh, God, sh there's a bunch of these Mandalorians. I was by myself. Now I'm like, I could have a people again. I'm, I just got redeemed within here. We got baby Grogu. We got a little place to live. Um, he, she's like, I, I got help if I need it. And then she looks at the wall, and it's the chrome... Uh, Beskar Mandalore uh, Mythosaur skull that's on the armorer's wall and that's where the episode ends I was like oh these bastards are always ending on cliffhangers uh, but I don't know there's something to do with that Mythosaur and definitely has to do with Bo-Katan I can't wait for next week's episode but I hope to god we don't go back to the doctor like I mean what did that even really do? Like, talk, they talked about Moth Gideon a little bit, and they talked about him doing his research, which was with Baby Grogu, was it not? And it had to do with cloning, and he thinks it could help the New Republic, which is... It, it just gave you a whole bunch of, like, dialogue and backstory into, like, shit that they really just, like... I, we just want to see Baby Grogu. <laughs> we really do. That's all we really want. Um, so, I can't wait till next week. Hopefully we get more Grogu, more action, more... Mando, more Mythosaurs, more, more Bo-Katan, and less Doctor. Um, he's not that interesting a character to me. I'd, I hate to say it, but... And even that evil bitch that was with him, like, their story was cool-ish, but it felt like a contained story, and... I don't know. I don't know. Maybe we'll come back to him, and he'll be brainwashed again, and... I don't know. Who knows? But <laughs> that's the end of this episode. So... Comment below what did you think of this episode for The Mandalorian. And uh, shout out to the Celtics. Hope they beat the Minnesota Timberwolves tonight. And comment below. Do you think we'll win tonight versus the Timberwolves? Uh, what did you think of Mandalorian? Will you be watching Ted Lasso? Um, will you be? Have you been watching The Bad Batch? What do you think of James Gunn directing the Superman movie? What did you think of The Last of Us? A lot. There's a lot going on. Bird Kreischer's new special. And... Um, once again, Ted Lasso, I'm going to have to go watch that right now. So I'll see you guys when I see you guys. I hope you enjoyed this video. Peace out, and I'll see you guys in the next one.